Um, my name is Frank Lamb. Um, I'm the project manager for the Grafton Street project. Uh, I have some other members of the project team here with me. Killian Skay, who is the architect working on the scheme, Rory O'Queeve, our public art manager, and Claire Liston, who is the project administrator. There will be some others, I think, here along later on to deal with the questions and answers. Um, again, from the City Council's point of view, this is uh, the premier street in the city. Uh, and the design competition that uh, you, you guys are interested in is a, an attempt on our part to ensure that uh, it, it remains unique. And uh, we very much welcome the submissions that, that you've been making. Um, I should say, uh, again, the, the works have commenced. Many of you will, I'm sure, have been up on Grafton Street and seen. Um, we've gone through phases one and phase two of the improvement works. And these are just some images of how the street uh, is intended to look when it's finished. Um, again, you can see evidence of this in phase one, which is the Stevens Green end of the street, and phase two, which is the Suffolk Street, uh, Nassau Street end. Um, under the city strategy, the City Council have prepared a plan, a public relevant plan for the Grafton Street quarter. The Grafton Street quarter runs from South Great Georgia Street over to Galair Street and from College Green to St. Stephen's Green. Uh, that, that plan, it's a draft plan, it's currently out for public consultation. Uh, details are available on uh, gsq.ie. And again, uh, we very much welcome your and any comments in relation to the plan. The plan sets out a series of improvements, um, some temporary and, and then all of the, the permanent improvement works that we intend carrying out in the Grafton Street quarter. And I'd like to call on Killian Skay, who is the project architect maybe to come up and talk through some of the work we've done to date and uh, maybe outline some of the plans we have for the future. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Good morning. Um, the map here, I don't know how legible it is from where you're sitting, but uh, the the streets in the area are shown, St. Stephen's Green down the bottom, bottom centre of the screen, and Grafton Street snaking up the middle. But you'll see from the colour, the, the, the pastel colours uh, that indicate the streets where um, street improvement works are envisaged right throughout the area. So going from um, Moldworth Street over on the right hand side of the screen, right through Grafton Street. Um, you'll, you'll see the purpley one is, is um, Dawson Street, which really is the realm for the new Lewis. And the new Lewis works are going to really go from wall to wall in, in terms of um, repaving and track laying. Um, Grafton Street then, uh, as Frank has explained, is under construction at the moment. Uh, Duke Street and Anne Street, and then the streets to the west of Grafton Street, Wicklow, and um, Chatham Street and Harry Street, and leading over towards the ones that run parallel with Grafton Street, um, Clarendon Street and Drury Street and South William Street. But the thinking of the the thinking of the the scheme for the Grafton Street quarter is to do with upgrading the whole area for pedestrians really and downgrading the importance of traffic movement through it. And although traffic does have to continue to percolate through it because there are um, car parks, multi-storey car parks throughout the area, going from um, Stephen's Green car park and the Brand Thomas's car park um, and Andrews Lane car park and School Lane car park over the other side. Between um, traffic that's essential for the economic life of the area continuing to percolate in a controlled way through it, and delivery traffic, where in Grafton Street occurs until 11 o'clock in the morning. After 11 o'clock, Grafton Street is a pedestrian street. But for the other streets, it's likely that they won't become pedestrian streets. They will be streets where the pedestrian is given more space, the footpaths are widened, the paving is improved, and the traffic will be able to get in to access car parks. We did a, a, a small scheme in Fade Street. This is Fade Street with South Great George Street at the far end. And this was, a, if you like, a little tryout scheme that we did with fairly cheap materials and not involving a whole lot, except that we removed the car parking on the street. Prior to this little scheme, the street had car parking on both sides. So what we've done is, 
is widen the footpaths, taken out the car parking, um, given the area that was parked cars back to pedestrians. We've, we've done some uh, public lighting and some planting. And um, we did that in consultation with the businesses there. And I think it's been quite a success. It's, it's, it's sort of um, has surprised us a little bit because although we were just sort of trying out some, some stuff in terms of street space reallocation, um, it seems to have worked very well. We might, throughout the scheme, throughout the Gravel Street Quarter, um, try out some other um, stuff in other streets, maybe not on a permanent basis, you know, laying stone forever, but even on a tryout basis, just see how it works. Um, we, there, was a, there was an art project as part of that Fade Street project, um, um, which involved uh, um, these beautiful images that went onto the, the traffic and ESB um, control boxes on the street, part of the street furniture. This was another scheme, um, a tr again a sort of tryout scheme, but this was in Clarendon Street, and you may be aware of it. We wanted to um, colonise the bit of the street that cars used to be parked on and make a pedestrian walkway that would take some of the pressure away from Grafton Street during the Grafton Street construction phase, because Grafton Street is a really busy uh, pedestrian flow street. So we thought, let's, let's do this, and let's do it in an imaginative way. And we put in the planters with the bamboo and the lavender, and then did a graphic on the street that would indicate um, the, the walking area. And it was supposed to have some delight and some humor, and um, I think it's working okay. It's, um, this is a visualization of Chatham Street. We are working through designing the side streets and thinking about how they would work. This is, this is not a design, now; it's just a, an image of what it might look like. Um, Johnson Place, which is another challenge for us. Um, it's, it's quite a well-formed architectural space and civic space, but it's, it's it's quite cluttered and haphazard in its layout. Some of it is owned in public in Dublin City Council's control and some of it is in private control, the hotel and the break for the border area. The greening, greening as part of our thinking about the Grafton Street Quarter is, is an essential element that, we're, that we consider. Um, planting trees in the city is things that is a good thing. It's not always possible, like it's not possible in Grafton Street because of the uh, the amount of services and cables and pipe work immediately onto the street. There isn't room, in fact, to plant anything in Grafton Street. Uh, but we will look as part of the whole quarter at planting possibilities uh, throughout the area. Um, that slide just shows, it, it just, to, just to keep in your head, that the Lewis project, which will come on this slide in, in, in College Green, will come up the lower part of Grafton Street and then turn left along Moldsworth and up Dawson Street. So it's in the area and it's happening at the moment. Um, this is an image that just Im imagines uh, the top of Grafton Street up to the Fusilier, Fusiliers Arch on the right and imagines what ha would happen with the, the Lewis, when the Lewis work is complete and traffic was taken out of that section of the street from Dawson Street, past the top of Grafton Street, and round to the College of Surgeons. So th this image is, a, is, again, is not a design, but is a way of imagining what could happen there in terms of enlivening the street. OK, Rory, would you like to go through our ideas for the street furniture? Hi, I'm Rory O'Creeve. I'm the Public Art Manager of Dublin City Council. Uh, you're welcome here. I'll go straight into the... Uh, no, of what we're here for this morning is the design competition brief. The first thing is to make clear is there's three separate competitions working in parallel. Uh, rather than put them into one competition, we felt that there were different skills sets required for these competitions and that one might be more design-led, another more or art-led, or a combination of all, and to give that freedom for us to choose the best and for people like you who are making proposals, hopefully, uh, to, to do, come up with your best work, we've divided into three uh, distinct competitions. 
The first one is for a seat or possibly a cluster of seats. Uh, space is limited outside what we, uh, outside at the, between Grafton Street and South King Street and Chatham Street. We have provided maps in the brief at the back and the exact location is clearly marked there. The second competition is for 12 individual artworks which will replace the bollards along the street. And I'll come to the technical issues behind this in a second. The third part of the competition is the idea of giving some people uh, with disability, older people, people who need a rest, an opportunity to take a break as they proceed along the street. And the idea is that we will get one design for a perch seat bollard and that that will be replicated 10 times and placed at intervals along the street. Again, clearly marked in the maps at the back of the brief. The concept is very, very important in all art and design competitions is to graph the com concept. Um, the first issue and the first most important thing is we want something that addresses the unique context of Grafton Street. We want designs that will enhance the experience for pedestrians along the street. We very, very much want original and innovative proposals. Uh, we particularly don't want stuff that's been done elsewhere and just lifted and brought uh, and landed down in Grafton Street. We feel that we live in the contemporary world and we always have, people always have lived in contemporary times and we want something while respecting the heritage and the architectural nature of Grafton Street which is a myriad of you know, layer upon layer of development design, living. We want these designs to express the contemporary and the best in art and design. We also, as is obvious, we want them to augment the architectural character of the street and we want them to complement the public realm uh, project. There are a number of technical issues as within any art and design competition, but they're particularly important in this context. The first is robustness. While you walk down Grafton Street at 12 o'clock in the afternoon or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you just see hordes and hordes of pedestrians. But if you were there at 6 o'clock in the morning or 9 o'clock in the morning, you'd see a totally different street. This is a street where people are undertaking deliveries in trucks that can be as big as 30, 40 feet long, that might be 20, 30 tonnes, and we can't just ignore the fact that this important part of the trading of Grafton Street takes place. So whatever designs that we end up with have to be robust and have to be able to withstand the knocks, though we might not like them, but the knocks that will inevitably happen. Um, so this affects the seats, the bollards, per seat bollards, and the unique artworks that will replace. It is very, very important because Time and time again, beautiful designs are commissioned, but after five months, five years, they start to look tired and shabby. We have designed the public realm. Killian, Frank and the team have gone to huge trouble to invest in really good quality materials, and we want the same for these art and design works. So maintenance, ease of maintenance. We don't want to be spending fortunes, you know, kind of catching up on what should have been caught up in the first place. For very, very good reasons, and I've referred to the fact that things get knocked and bashed around, unfortunately, it will be a requirement for the bollard style works, i.e. the 12 unique artworks and the 10 perch seat bollards, that the same design socket system is used for the bottom of these, uh, these fixtures as exists for the existing bollards. And finally, but equally important, is the whole issue of health and safety. Uh, a lot of this is just sheer common sense. But we particularly want to take cognizance of the fact that there are people with disability and Dublin City Council are proud to say we're adopting the principles of universal design in Grafton Street. 
this is as it looks at present, already beginning to take great shape. Uh, the kind of crumbling red brick is beginning to disappear and to be replaced by uh, Leinster granite on the pavement areas and then continental granite in the centre. Just for your information, these, you know, just to show you the existing street furniture that is beginning to go in, uh, these are the bins. Uh, these are the bollards that are going in, some of which will be replaced by possibly somebody's inspiration in this room. And the street furniture lighting, though this uh, element of the design is still being finalised. To the competition, to the important bit. Well, as you can see there, and as you probably already know, this is an open competition to anybody anywhere in the world. Uh, we would love to think that people from right across the world might take interest in putting proposals uh, in for this. You can put in a proposal for each one of the competitions. You're not excluded to one. So you can put in three proposals, one for each of the competitions. The competi competition itself is two stages. Um, and the requirements for stage one, and I should go back, Competition is two stages and it's open. The stage one is the open element of the competition. The requirements for stage one, I hope, are fairly straightforward, self-evident. We want, we want to be concise. We want you to come up with the nub of your ideas. The detailed aspects of final design and costings can come later. What we're now screening out is basically those who have the best ideas and have addressed in some ways the technical issues to go alongside that. So first of all, we want a short description relating to the thinking and ideas behind the art and design concept and the approach to the commission. That should be no more, and I really emphasize that, no more than one A4 page. If you can't sum up your concept in one A4 page, well, um, maybe go back and start editing. It's really, really important. It should be concise. But what we want, in fact, five lines might even do it, is what are the ideas that inspired you to come up with your proposal? We want to know, as an advanced thing, to sort of start screening out in relation to the technical aspects of things. We want to know what proposed materials and fabri fabrication techniques, as well as reference to any particular technical issues outlined above. We need most important things, we're talking to designers and we're talking to artists here, we need visualizations. This could include sketches, Photoshop, montage, media I haven't heard of here, I haven't listed here, um, of the proposed street furniture. And that would be separate and again, to, while we have, including the seat sign, unique bollards, seat bollards, um, unique artworks, these are still just to emphasize three separate competitions for each one of these we would want maximum of A1 board with sketches, drawings, visualization. We need to know who you are so that we have a little idea of your background, your skills, your abilities to take on this job. Um, and that, therefore, we want a CV of the artist, the designer, the principal key members. If you're a big, huge architectural firm, we don't need the CVs of everybody. We just need the principal people involved. And then, equally important for us, is to give an idea of where this idea comes from. We want examples of relevant previous work. Again, keep it simple. No more than 10 images to accompany with some short accompanying text. I'm not going to dwell on stage two, other than say there is a stage two, five People, up to five people, will be shortlisted for each of the three competitions and will be invited uh, to put in proposals. At that stage, we'll be looking for very detailed designs, technical specifications, and equally important, detailed financial costings relation to each work. The kind of carrot for getting into stage two is that each artist, designer who is shortlisted will be paid a fee of 1500 including inclusive of that. We will, of course, at this stage, after we've gone through all the proposals stage two, we will be issuing a detailed brief for stage, stage one. We'll be issuing a detailed brief for stage two. We also, and importantly to make note, 
that you can, as you can, put in for all three competitions. We also reserve the right to shortlist an individual or team for more than one competition. The time frame, the important bit, another important bit. Closing deadline is Thursday, the 5th of December, 2013. Um, it's important, I think it's one o'clock is the closing time. Uh, no late entries. I just have to emphasize this is just the way it is in the architectural design and the art world, as you know, anybody who's putting in an Arts Council application or a Dublin City Council Arts Office uh, a grant application the other day, our deadlines are strict. That is just to ensure fairness for everybody. The deadline for stage two will be Thursday the 6th of February. And we hope to commission the works soon after that. The criteria, the important things that you'll be measured against. Uh, the criteria are the originality of concept and ideas. 30 marks will be awarded for that. The relevance of Grafton Street and the public realm, how it works within, how your designs, how your proposals work within Grafton Street, 30 marks. Technical issues, including feasibility, safety, and design, 20 marks. Track record of the individual or team, 20 marks. Proposals must receive more than 50% in each category in order to go forward. In other words, the reason for that uh, caveat is that we can't have somebody who is brilliant, has a one single brilliant idea but hasn't demonstrated the ability to deliver. The selection panels. The selection panel for stage one hopefully combines the best in the Grafton Street team and external expertise. We have Frank Lamb, who already uh, addressed. He's the project manager of the Grafton Street Quarter. We have Brian Swan, deputy city architect, who's been involved in the, uh, in, in the project. Killian Skay, beside me, architect. Myself, the public art manager. An engineer from Dublin City Council to be confirmed. Cecily Brennan, a visual artist who was nominated by Visual Artists Ireland, and Barry Sheehan, who's representing the, uh, who's a designer, uh, representing the, the Institute for Designers in Ireland, and is also head of design in DIT. The panel for stage two will be announced and given in more detail uh, subsequently. The application procedure. This is all written in black and white, but I've been around a lot of competitions for a lot of time, and there are certain things that just have to be emphasized time and time again. And the first one is um, proposals and applicants applications will only be received in hard copy format. You might wonder why I'm laboring this point, but all last week in the Arts Office, we were getting phone calls saying, can we not send our proposal in by email? It's not that we're Luddites, it's not that we don't want to embrace new technology, it is just that the systems within City Council, the volumes of images, scale of things, just wouldn't be able to handle that, this process at this stage. So hard copy format only. You must, you can't lump your three competition proposals together, you must package and mark each competition proposal separately. Please mark them appropriately with the relevant number, competition one, two, or three, as appropriate, and deliver to the following address, uh, which is the executive manager, southeast area, block two, floor four, civic offices, Wood Key, Dublin 8. Copyright. Your ideas for the beginning remain with you. We don't want to steal anybody's ideas. So any, you, you, you make a proposal for stage one, the copyright remains with you. If you go into stage two, there will be different copyright uh, issues pertaining to that, which will be outlined in more detail at that stage. The reason for that is that if we take, uh, if we take on your ideas, we don't want to see them popping up in Los Angeles, you're later on, Los Angeles or London, because what we're looking for is unique graft and street furniture. Any other business? Feed feedback, uh, very much in the art and design world, feedback is an important aspect. However, we're hoping there will such, be such a volume 
of proposals for this that we just will not. It's just I am one person in the city council and I would not be able to carry on the rest of my work. So there will not be there will be no feedback provided to entrants after stage one. Return of proposals. Again, with the volume of we're hoping for, uh, proposals will not be returned. So my advice to you is if you want a copy of it, make sure you copy it before you send it in. We will not be using, as I said, the copyright thing does not let us go off and start using your proposals. It will be safe, it's just that the whole logistics of returning proposals. There are important terms and conditions at the back of the briefing document. These relate to the fact of our right not to choose, for example. They relate to VAT, financial issues, and other important um, details. And finally, if you have any queries, uh, you can email me at rurie, R-U-A, I-R-I, dot, O-C-U-I-V, at dublincity.ie. Queries have to be submitted by the 25th of November, and I promise I have to stay up all night, every night, to have them all answered by the 29th of November. And now, I'd like you to invite you, or any of you who want to ask questions. Um, my question is in relation to uh, Commission 2. Is it one submission with 12 individual designs in it, or is it that you'll pick 12 individual designs from each submission? No, it's one submission for 12 bollards. So what we're looking for there is 12 different designs in one submission. In other words, we're inviting artists and designers to come up with 12 artworks uh, and to make proposals for 12 separate ideas. Uh, that would relate and replace the bollards. The fact that there isn't a budget allocated for any of the competitions uh, in the brief has been carefully thought out. The reason is that if you were to propose a gold-plated bollard as opposed to somebody else who might be proposing stone or steel, the cost is so significantly different. So what we want at this stage, we're very, very much looking for ideas. We're looking for indication of materials, but budgets are not the primary issue at this stage. When you say that the seating, what size, uh, what dimensions in terms of the, and how many seats uh, is, within the seating? Yeah. I mean, is there, a, you know, it's more than a park bench, but you know what I mean? Uh, what, what exactly is the... the I, I might also call on Killian to help answer this question. The idea there was that we can't put seats into Grafton Street. It's too busy. It's too, it's a flow of, it's a huge flow of people, a river of people all day and all night. We are being asked all the time to put seating in the city centre and it's a problem for us uh, because you put a seating outside a shop, it causes a problem for the shop. Um, but we're being asked to take into account people, elderly people, people who get tired, people, um, mothers with children who need to sit down. Just everything points towards the city council taking care of its public realm in a responsible way and providing places for people to sit. We can't do it in Grafton Street. But our attempt at looking at this was um, two things. One is the perch seats, which, if you like, re would replace a bollard just with a bit of width to allow you to rest your legs, not stay there for the rest of the day, but just rest your legs. The other element, which is the one that you're asking about, was that we thought that there could be a seat or a cluster of seat, seats uh, that would provide, a, a, if you like, a sculpture, a piece of artwork that would be delightful that you could sit on. Now, we're not proposing that there would be these all over Grafton Street. We're only talking about one place. And uh, we, will, we will have to find the place that it, where it disrupts the pedestrian flow the least. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't presume to, to suggest anything more than that because we're here to see what you people can um, think through and design. From the plan, it looks like the seat is kind of pushed up against 
uh, a building. So has it been decided that it won't be a centerpiece in the street? Will it have to be to one side? It will have to be to one side. It won't, okay. Uh, uh, if I, I, is that the map that you're, that you're thinking about? Maybe it is. This is, a, this is the area of the street that is Chatham Street. And you see Tangier Lane, and there is seat, sculpt seat sculpture indicated there. Indicated yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, that, uh, there is nothing particular about that area, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't push that too hard, other than it is an area in the street where there is a little piece of, of a shadow, and so it, it, it wouldn't inter interrupt the pedestrian flow there. Obviously, it's outside a particular shop, so we have to think this through. So I wouldn't just be too wedded to the exact location there. Like, I think we've... It will not be in the middle of the street. It will not be in the middle of the street, because the middle of the street is until 11 o'clock, a full vehicle carriageway. So just following that question, we could assume that the line of the bollards, it'll be either side of those and, and, and not in the thoroughfare. Correct. Okay. Sorry, just in relation to commission... To, so the individual artworks, these are not seen as something that will be sat on? No, no. sorry. No, to be very clear, about it, if, you, if, you, if you come up with something that is also sat on, that's you, your idea. But no, we are not thinking of these as purchase seat bollards. They are purely kind of artistic design. And is there any um, requirements of the desire that these 12 pieces will in some way um, link work as, as a whole, tw as a set, or are they? Without being, yeah, I, um, without being over prescriptive to me, you know, as I envisage it, envisage it now, though we can always be surprised, I would imagine, it, to use kind of a phrase, that these would be a suite you know, of artworks, 12 artworks that in some way relate to each other. but. That being said, you can be always be surprised and somebody could come up with 12 things that have absolutely no connection, no relationship with each other. Um, the dimensions of the bollards, do they, have to, do they have to keep within the dimensions of the original bollards on the streets? Or can they be wider, taller? So we have an alignment of bollards which you can see on either side of the central carriageway. And they are for the full length of the street and their function is to prevent vehicles driving in on the cellars that extend out from the front of the shops. And cellars right along the street extend almost as far as the bollards. Some of them are very brittle, very soft. A vehicle driving on them would cause a problem. So the alignment of bollards is to prevent vehicles driving in there. Our idea was that some of these bollards could be different, okay. could be delightful, could be sculptures, could be designed. But in, in answer to your question, what size are they? I think the height of them will not be dissimilar, not be dissimilar to the bollard height that's there, which is a, about, a, about a meter high. The girth yeah. and width of these things, there's some latitude there, but if they become too bulky, then they become an obstruction on the street. Mm -hmm. I think I would use as without, again, without trying to be prescriptive, we have two pieces of street furniture that we're putting in at the moment, which are out of a catalogue. And they are bins and bollards. They're made of ductile iron. They're robust. So somewhere between, I would think that the size of a bin would be to the, out, the, the, the upper end of the bulk. That's quite large in comparison to the bollards that are there. They're the bollards that are in place right now. They are. And I think the bin would be the maximum size. Okay. Because if you get any bigger than that, or if you have things sticking out of a thing, it becomes... A, but they don't have to keep the baseball bat shape? No. No. Okay. Thank you. Is it the sprocket system that is, they fit to the bin and the bollard is the same size, or does it matter? The socket system that we'd be using for these artworks, yeah. Uh, will be standard size. Standard. I don't think you need to worry about that. Are they that. existing? Or the reason you're asking for They do exist, they, yes. They exist at the yeah. moment. Yeah, the and bollards you are... You said up. it could be the size of a bin or the size of a bollard. Is it a different system for the bin or as for the bollard? Sorry, I was, re I was referring there. The question was about what size, I yeah, presumed, sorry. above the ground was the question. Yeah. Below the ground, the bollards have a certain size. It's like a pipe, 
a tube that goes yeah. into the ground into a socket. The bin is actually fixed differently. Okay. But what we're looking for it's is... For the Pollard. The Pollard. Correct. Okay. And yeah. services to those, is there power? If you wanted power, if you wanted... There isn't. There isn't. Is no. that a possibility or...? It's not. Okay. Thank you. With the seat, is there a possibility of power at that? Because you don't know exactly where the location is, so it hasn't been, so there could be a possibility of, of, of putting power to it. There isn't. There isn't. I'm sorry to be so blunt, but the, 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 all the services and cables uh, are all taken care of as we speak. Oh. The area where that has... It would have to generate its own power then, would it, if it needed wanted power? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You're pushing out the boundaries. <laughs> People can understand the, uh, the fees in the first stage, and they understand the, I guess, the honorarium of the second stage. But what they're trying to figure out is what is a reasonable expectation of the fees should they be appointed? So is it a percentage of the value of the works? Do you have a fixed fee in mind? They're kind of saying to me, listen, if I enter this, how much money do you think I'll make at the end of it? Is there a, an indication? Of yeah. I suppose in, in, in my role as public art manager, I come across, or just as somebody who's been doing commissioning for a long time, it's a question that I come across a lot. Is, is it, almost impossible to put one percentage figure on something like this because really um, if somebody proposes to do a long-term engagement you know that's very very intensive labor-wise if somebody comes up as I've had in the past somebody's come up with an amazing idea for a neon installation and actually the idea has basically happened in 20 48 hours uh, there's a different cost involved what I will emphasize and it's not to avoid the question but what I will emphasize is that it's a principle of Dublin City Council that we pay artists and designers properly for their work. So when we get to stage two, uh, the artists or designers will be paid with fair and commensurate fees relating to the level of work involved, obviously the talent, and the ongoing work if we then proceed to commissioning. That's actually a very good answer. The second one, though, is related to that is the copyright sort of rests both ways in one sense in that is the designer have, do they have the expectation that the units that win will only be used in Grafton Street and won't be popping up all over the place and then you license them to Taipei? I think yeah. that's, that, that is something that you know, we have already been discussing internally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we don't, again, want to abuse you know, somebody's, you know, droit de suite to somebody's intellectual property. Um, there is a question. If this was a really successful, you know, if, for example, the perch seat bollard is something that could be replicated yeah. easier, that's a, you know, one design for multiple of ten, that there is a possibility that we might want to roll that out you know, across, for example, the Grafton Street area. Um, but again, those neg negotiations will be fair, they'll be conducted. You know, it's not a question of us suddenly getting for cheap some of these bright ideas and then flogging them around the world or the rest of Ireland or the rest of the city.